Hi everyone and welcome back. My name is Robert Yang and today we'll be looking at a drug called Prodaxa. The generic name is called Dibigatran and it comes with three different strengths, 75, 110, 150 milligram. So the first part that I'll be going over is the patient education. Let's look at the disease that the medication treats first before understanding what the medication is. What is atrial fibrillation? This is an irregular and often very rapid heart rhythm that can lead to blood clots in the heart. It increases risk of stroke, heart failure, and other heart-related complications. For many people, AFib may have no symptoms. However, it can cause a fast and pounding heart rate, chest pain, dizziness, and shortness of breath. If you have chest pain, I recommend seeking immediate medical help. Chest pain can mean that you're having a heart attack. Some causes and risk factors include coronary artery disease, high blood pressure, using stimulants or drinking alcohol, lung disease, obesity, and age. Another disease state that the medication can treat is called venous thromboembolism. It includes deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. DVT occurs when the blood clot forms in the deep vein. It usually develops in the lower leg, thigh, or pelvis but it can also occur in the arm. PE occurs when a part of a clot breaks off and travels to the lung causing blockage. If the clot in the lungs is small and with appropriate treatment, people can recover from the PE. However, there could be some damage to the lungs. If the clot is large, it can stop blood flow from reaching the lungs and is fatal. Symptoms of DVT can include swelling, pain, and redness of the skin. Symptoms of PE can include difficulty breathing, chest pain, and coughing up blood. Some causes and risk factors can include injury to the vein, often caused by fracture, severe muscle injury, or major surgery, slow blood flow, often caused by confinement to the bed uh, due to medical condition, limited movement, an example is having a cast on the leg to help heal an injured bone, or sitting for a long time, especially with crossed legs or paralysis. It also includes age, family history, and obesity. So, what is Prodoxa? This is an anticoagulant that helps prevent the formation of blood clots. It lowers the risk of stroke caused by atrial fibrillation. It is used when AFib is not caused by a heart valve problem. It treats and prevents deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, and it is used in adults and children three months of age and older. What are some important safety issues before taking this medication? Tell your doctor if you have a bleeding disorder, if you have kidney problems, if you have had or plan to have a heart valve replaced. If you are breastfeeding, do not breastfeed while taking this drug. And last of all, if you are undergoing a spinal tap or receiving spinal anesthesia, Prodoxa can cause serious blood clot around your spinal cord, which can lead to paralysis. How to take Prodoxa? Take it exactly as prescribed by your doctor. Take it with a full glass of water. It may be taken with or without food, and you want to swallow the whole capsule. Do not crush, chew, break, or open it. What are some important safety issues while taking this medication? Do not discontinue taking the medication without talking to your doctor. You may bleed more easily. Avoid activities that may increase your risk of bleeding or injury. Also, avoid alcohol as heavy drinking can increase your risk of stomach bleeding. If you are taking two doses in a day, then take them 12 hours apart. If you fall or if you hit your head, call your doctor as soon as possible. What are some of the possible side effects? Common side effects include stomach pain or discomfort, indigestion, nausea, and diarrhea. Serious side effects can include pink or brown urine, any bleeding that will not stop, cough with bloody mucus, black or tarry stools, joint pain, or swelling. What happens if you miss a dose? Take the missed dose as soon as you remember it. If you miss a dose less than six hours before your next scheduled dose, then skip the missed dose and continue your regular dosing schedule. Do not double dose to make up for the missed one. How to store this medication? Store it at room temperature in a dry place. Keep it in a safe place away from children. Throw away any expired or unused capsules left after four months and keep it in the original bottle. And also keep the lid tightly closed. Now I will be going over the prescriber education. 
Pharmacologic category and pricing. This is the anticoagulant, a direct thrombin inhibitor, and also a direct oral anticoagulant. The 75 milligram, 110 milligram, and 150 milligram each cost $9.92. Recommended dosing. Dosing in the adult. For AFib to prevent stroke and systemic embolism, this is 150 milligram twice a day. If there is an increased risk of bleeding, it is going to be 110 milligram twice a day. For VTE, both DVT and PE treatment, you want to give at least five days of initial therapy with a parenteral anticoagulant, then transition to dibigatran and give 150 milligram twice a day. For VTE prophylaxis and total hip and knee arthroplasty, the initial is 110 milligram given one to four hours after completion of the surgery and establishment of hemostasis or when dibigatran is not initiated on the day of surgery. You want to give an initial dose of 220 milligram after hemostasis has been achieved. Then continue the maintenance dose of 220 milligram once daily for a minimum of 10 to 14 days, and this can extend to up to 35 days. For outer kidney function dosing, VTE, cranial clearance of more than 30 milliliter per minute, there is no dose adjustment. If the cranial clearance is less than or equal to 30 milliliter per minute, you want to avoid use. For AFib, if the cranial clearance is greater than 30 milliliter per minute, no dose adjustment. If it is between 15 to less than or equal 30 milliliter per minute, then you want to give 75 milligram twice a day. If the cranial clearance is less than or equal to 15 milliliter per minute, you want to avoid use. And for hepatic obesity dosing, there is no dose adjustment. So how to transition from another anticoagulant to dibigatran? If transitioning from a low molecular weight heparin or fond of Paranux, you want to initiate dibigatran within two hours prior to the time of the next scheduled dose of the parenteral anticoagulant. Transitioning from unfractionated heparin continuous infusion, you want to start dibigatran when unfractionated heparin is stopped. And transitioning from warfarin, you want to discontinue the warfarin and initiate dibigatran when the INR is less than 2. If you're transitioning from dibigatran into another anticoagulant, for example, from a low molecular weight heparin, from the Paranux, or unfractioned heparin, continuous infusion, after the last dose of dibigatran, you want to wait 12 hours. This is assuming the cranial clearance is greater than or equal to 30 milliliter per minute, or wait 24 hours if the cranial clearance is less than 30 milliliter per minute before starting the parenteral anticoagulant. Transitioning from dibigatran to warfarin. So one option is to stop the dibigatran, start the warfarin the same day and bridge with the parental anticoagulant until the desired INR is reached. An alternative is to overlap the two agents. If this is done, the timing of warfarin initiation is based on the cranial clearance. The cranial clearance of more than 50, initiate warfarin three days before discontinuing the dibigatran. If the cranial clearance is 30 to 50, you want to initiate warfarin two days. If the cranial clearance is 15 to 30 milliliter per minute, you want to initiate warfarin one day before, and if cranial clearance is less than 15, then dibigatran should not be used. So what is the mechanism of action of Pradoxa? This is a specific reversible direct thrombin inhibitor that inhibits both free and fibrin bound thrombin. It inhibits coagulation by preventing thrombin mediated effects. Cleavage of the fibrinogen to fibrin, activations of factor 5, 8, 11, and 13, and inhibition of thrombin-induced platelet aggregation. Pharmacokinetics. The absorption is very rapid. Volume distribution is 50 to 70 liter. Protein binding is 35%. It is metabolized hepatically. The bioavailability is 3 to 7%. For the half-life elimination, pediatrics is 12 to 14 hours. Adults is 12 to 17 hours. In elderly, it is 14 to 17 hours. And in mild to moderate renal impairment, it is 15 to 18 hours. And then in severe renal impairment, it is 28 hours. Time to peak in plasma. Fasting state is one hour. It can delay two hours by food. And the excretion is primarily in the urine. Medical safety issues. Breaking, chewing, opening capsules will lead to a 75% increase in absorption. For the sound of light, look like issues. Dabigatran may be confused with Vigabitran. Pradaxa may be confused with Plavix. This is a high alert medication. In geriatric patients, this is a high risk medication. 
and the various criteria and appropriate medication to be used with caution in patients 75 years and older due to an increased risk of GI bleeding compared to warfarin. Some contraindications include active pathological bleeding, history of hypersensitivity reaction to dibigitran or to one of the excipients of the product, and mechanical prostatic heart valve. What are some of the drug interactions? P-glycoprotein inducers include carbamazepine, phenobarbital, phenytoin, rifampin, and St. John's wort. For the inhibitors, this include amiodarone, cyclosporin, ticagrelor, verapamil, and intraconazole. Other anticoagulants include apixaban, argatroban, edoxaban, enoxaparin, deltaparin, and fondaparinox. What are some of the monitoring parameters? This include complete blood count, activated partial thromboplastin clotting time, prothrombin time, serum creatinine, and liver function tests. And these are my references. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you learned something new today and be on the lookout for my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.